Oh, man, let me tell you about my marriage. Me and my wife, Hilly, we've been together for almost 20 years now. Can you believe it? Our anniversary is coming up real soon, on December 10th. And let me tell you, I wouldn't change a thing about our life together. Sure, we've had our share of fights, but the making up? Oh, it was always so worth it. That's just how we rolled. Now, there was this one rough patch early on, like in our second year together. But other than that, smooth sailing. We tied the knot young, me at 20 and Hilly at just 18. We had known each other since we were kids, living right around the corner from each other. My older brother Bob had married Hilly's sister, Pam, a year earlier, so it felt like the natural next step for us. The challenge was that Bob and Pam had a baby within the first year of marriage, but we weren't so lucky. We went through tests, even though the doctors advised us not to stress and let things happen naturally. But Hilly's mom kept pushing us to start a family. She was always like that, especially since she had only daughters besides Pam. My mother-in-law, Jan, was eager for a grandson after having all girls herself. The test results were inconclusive. Hilly was fine, but I had a slightly low sperm count or something like that. Honestly, I never fully grasped all the details. The doctors reassured us that the situation wasn't too serious and that everything was all right. They advised us to be patient and assured us that our first baby would come when the time was right. Although we tried to be patient, the pressure did put some strain on our marriage. Luckily, we didn't have to wait too long. In our third year of marriage, Hilly gave birth, just as the doctor had predicted. Linda arrived, a beautiful baby girl. It eased our worries about whether we could have children, and from then on, everything settled down, and our marriage became even stronger. We were more relaxed about it all. Soon after, Hilly became pregnant again, and finally, Tom was born. A son. The whole family was ecstatic. This doesn't mean we loved our daughters any less, but having a son felt extra special for us. I was the first to have a son, and I proudly told my big brother about it. He just smiled and told me to give him time. Well, he got his chance, and sure enough the following year, they had their first son too. Eight months later, we welcomed another son, Mike. It was like buses, you wait for ages, and then several come at once. With two brothers and two sisters, we lived like one big happy family. Even when Hilly's other sisters got married, they became part of our close-knit family too. It was wonderful for the children, and we always had someone to watch them when we needed. From what I could tell, the other couples were just as happy as Hilly and me, enjoying the simple joys of married life surrounded by loving family. We faced a few challenges, like when Bob had his work accident, and I felt like I was right there with him as they transfused my blood into him. He recovered, and I was fine too. We often joked in a brotherly way that we were now truly blood brothers. As our 20th anniversary approached, we wondered how to celebrate it. Bob and Pam had celebrated theirs the year before, and we all had such a great time that we decided to do something similar. We booked a private room at the local hotel for a big gathering of family and friends. But then, there was Linda, a beautiful 17-year-old girl, a younger and perhaps even prettier version of her mother. She had shiny dark brown hair and big green eyes that always caught your attention. She had a similar figure too, slim with nice legs and other features that maybe a father shouldn't think about too much. She naturally had a string of boyfriends, and the house always seemed to have one of them around, but she was level-headed so we just rolled with it. Tom, I always thought, took after me a bit. Solidly built, and it suited him. He loved rugby, just like Bob and I did at his age, and at almost 16, he was already a regular player at fly half for his school's first team. And then there was young Mike, the youngest. Maybe he was going through a rough patch, not being as good at sports as Tom, or as popular as Linda. Poor Mike wasn't having the best time. Nothing serious, you know. He was very smart, probably even smarter than the other two, and did really well in school, just acting like a typical, totally incomprehensible teenager. That day, maybe I should have been more understanding. Maybe I should have overlooked the mess he'd left on the dining table. Maybe I should have just cleaned it up for him. But did I? No. You're not going out until you've cleaned up that mess, Mike, I told him firmly. I'll do it later, he replied, sulking. You'll do it now, Mike, I said firmly. Why are you always singling me out? He shouted back, losing his cool. I'm not, I replied sharply. You're part of this family, and you'll follow our rules like everyone else. 
Who's going to force me? Mike nearly cried, really losing his temper. I will, I retorted, starting to lose my patience. I'm your father, and you'll do as I say. My father, huh? He yelled back. You sure about that? I froze in shock, my next words still stuck in my throat, stunned by what he said. Sorry, Dad, Mike quickly interjected, his face pained. Sorry, Dad, I didn't mean to say that. I'll clean it up right away. With that, he looked away from me and quickly tidied up the table, gathering the books and other items he had left there. Within minutes, everything was cleared, and he hurried out of the room without saying another word, leaving me lost in my thoughts, wondering if my world was about to crumble. The problem, of course, was that Mike had always been so different from the other two, more studious, more serious, but less outgoing than his older siblings. I often wondered why he was so different, and had even discussed it with Hilly, but she just shrugged and told me I was imagining things. Was I? Had I been? What made Mike say that? If he had just yelled it in anger and walked away, I would have been upset. But that would have been it. But he was so quick to apologize and take back his words. Why? What did he know that I didn't? Oh no, I didn't want to entertain the thoughts racing through my troubled mind at that moment. My initial impulse was to go find Hilly and demand answers. But what good would that do? What would I say? I couldn't just accuse her of cheating on me. If she had, she'd deny it, and if she hadn't, how would she ever forgive me for doubting her? Besides, it had been sixteen years or more ago, but did that even matter? Was it still happening? My stomach churned, and I felt nauseous, and I still didn't know if I had reason to worry. Oh God, what a terrible day it was. Blood types. That's it, I thought. Without hesitation, I went to our study and found the kids' medical records, Linda, Tom, and Mike, all O positive, which, from donating blood to my brother, I knew was the same as mine. I felt a sense of relief until it dawned on me that blood types didn't tell the whole story. If Mike had a different type, that would be one thing, but them all having the same group could just be a coincidence and didn't confirm that he was truly my son. Oh dear, what should I do? DNA? I couldn't believe I was considering such an extreme measure over one angry comment from my son. I was overreacting, but when Mike avoided eye contact during dinner that evening and left the table without a word, my concern grew. What's wrong with Mike? Hilly asked, noticing his odd behavior too. No clue, I replied, shrugging. Do you guys know? They shook their heads, seemingly oblivious. Has he been upset about anything? I prodded, but they shook their heads again. Once the kids left the table, I mustered the courage to ask my wife. Mike seems so different from the other two, Hilly, I began. Any thoughts on why? Let's not dwell on that, Davy, she replied, getting up to clear the dishes. He's just a bit deeper than the others. End of story. Was she avoiding the topic deliberately or was she genuinely unconcerned? I couldn't tell. Why not consider DNA testing? Twenty minutes later, I was researching it online. An hour later, my head was swimming with information, but I wasn't much closer to an answer. It wasn't until Monday morning that I finally found a lab that could do the test. It took me nearly an hour, and my secretary could have probably done it much quicker. But how do you explain to your secretary why you need a lab test? Exactly. That's why I did it myself. The lab could do it, no problem. But it was expensive, especially if I wanted the results back quickly. But I had to know before I risked ruining my marriage. When I explained I needed to know before risking my marriage, they suggested I send samples from all three kids to cross-check, along with one of my own. Ever tried getting a hair from your grown-up kids? Not easy, I'll tell you. And with Mike avoiding me whenever possible, it was the hardest of all. But I managed it, sent them off, and waited. Now all I could do was wait to find out if Mike was really my son. Over the next week, Mike seemed to calm down, probably relieved I hadn't brought up his outburst. We almost reached a point where I felt I could gently talk to him about it, but I thought it best to wait for the results now that I had gone down this path. My wife, of course, continued to be her usual loving self, and nothing else changed in our daily routine. It may not have been the most passionate lovemaking we had during those days, but I didn't turn her down. Doubts were gnawing at me inside, and even though I tried my best to hide it from Hilly, I couldn't engage in intimacy with her without wondering if someone else had been involved over our twenty years of marriage. One evening, we had dinner with my brother and his wife, and when he and I had a moment alone, I almost confessed my worries to him. 
we were so alike in almost every aspect, so if someone else fathered Mike, then logically, it couldn't have been him. Why was I even entertaining such thoughts? Was I already so paranoid? But something held me back. I didn't need to burden him with my uncertainties, and deep down, I believed he would support me if the results turned out unfavorable. I remained composed. I stayed silent. I kept so quiet that Hilly asked me a couple of times if everything was all right. I reassured her, saying I had a few things on my mind. She looked concerned briefly but didn't push further. The results arrived. I had them sent to my office, just in case Hilly got there before me and opened the letter. With trembling hands I read it, trying to grasp its meaning. Would this piece of paper mark the end of my marriage? After reading it, it seemed that Mike's results matched mine, and I felt a sense of relief, even though I didn't fully understand it. Medical terms are like gibberish to me. The report was filled with terms like good match and close match, so it appeared that my worries were unfounded. What a relief. Tears welled up in my eyes as I thanked my lucky stars that I hadn't shared my fears with Hilly. I decided to make it up to her that evening, perhaps by taking her out to dinner and afterward. Upon rereading the covering letter, which I hadn't paid much attention to before, I noticed that the lab wanted me to call them to discuss the results. I figured they just wanted to squeeze some extra cash out of me, and I wasn't sure if it was worth the hassle. When the phone was answered, I introduced myself as Davy Jones and mentioned that Dr. Hoskins had asked me to call. After providing some references, I finally got through to the doctor. Hello, Mr. Jones, he greeted me. Have you had a chance to review the results we sent you? Yes, I replied confidently. It seems that my worries about my son Mike were unfounded. Yes, indeed, he responded. But it's not quite that simple, I'm afraid, he added, and my heart sank as I waited for him to deliver the bad news. You mean he's not my son? I stammered. It's not that, Mr. Jones, he clarified. There's less than a one in a million chance that he's not your biological child. I am certain that he is your natural-born son. So Mike is my real son? I sighed in relief. Yes, he is, Mr. Jones. Then what's the problem? I asked, feeling uncertain. What else could be wrong? I was starting to worry because I had heard that DNA testing could also reveal genetic diseases. It's the other two samples you sent in, the doctor said heavily. What about the samples from your son's brother and sister? I asked, feeling a surge of panic. Is there something wrong with one of them? Well, it seems that they are only half-siblings to your youngest son, Mr. Jones, the doctor explained. Half-siblings? I stuttered in shock. What does that mean, doctor? What's a half-sibling? It means, Mr. Jones, he continued, that it's highly unlikely that you are their biological father. The phone slipped from my grip, and the next thing I knew, I was surrounded by my concerned co-workers as I struggled to regain consciousness. Give him some air, someone called out as I slowly came to, gasping for breath. Are you okay, Davy? Another voice asked, and I nodded weakly, attempting to stand. They helped me back into my chair, chatting among themselves about the workload and the office temperature. It all seemed so trivial compared to the bombshell I had just received. Thankfully, Someone arranged for me to be driven home and urged me to take the rest of the day off. Grateful to find the house empty upon my arrival, with Hilly at work and the kids at school, I knew what I had to do next. I dreaded making the call, but I knew I had to do it. With trembling fingers, I dialed the laboratory's number again, and soon I was speaking with the doctor once more, apologizing for the abrupt ending of our previous conversation. No worries, Mr. Jones, he reassured me. Our postal service can be tricky to navigate at times. I assured him that I understood, and he patiently reviewed the test results with me once more. Mike is definitely your son, he confirmed, but Linda and Tom are unlikely to be your biological children. But the results showed good or close matches, I pleaded. Could there be a mistake? If we had only one sample, we might request another for verification, he explained. But with two samples, the likelihood is nearly certain. While Linda and Tom are full siblings, it's improbable that you're their father. But you said the matches were close, I insisted, clinging to a glimmer of hope. What does that mean? Do you have a twin or a brother, Mr. Jones? The doctor cautiously inquired. Or perhaps another relative? My brother! I exclaimed, a surge of excitement coursing through me. What does my brother have to do with this situation? You'll have to come to your own conclusions, Mr. Jones. 
the doctor's voice droned on, but I wasn't really listening anymore. My world had suddenly shattered into pieces. What should I do now? End my marriage? Sever my lifelong bond with my brother? You can't choose your family after all. Should I just pretend I didn't know anything? Keep living a lie? I couldn't bear it. And what about Mike? He knew something was wrong, but he had the wrong idea. From now on, I'd see my son in a different way, but I couldn't love Linda and Tom any less. They were my kids, no matter whose genes they carried, and no piece of paper could change that. But what about Hilly? That was the real question. What about that witch? And my jerk of a brother, too. And Pam, my sister-in-law. How would they react to the news? How would the rest of the family handle it? So many questions were swirling in my head. Oh, God, this was all so complicated, and I didn't feel ready to deal with it. I vaguely remember stepping out of the front door and starting to walk down the street, but the next thing I knew, I was waking up in the hospital with bandages all over my arms. I had stumbled in front of a car while completely wasted, but I didn't remember any of that at the time. Davy, are you all right? I turned to see who had asked, but it hurt. It hurt like crazy. Then I recognized the voice and realized it was my ex-wife speaking to me. Not really, not yet anyway, I replied. She was still my wife. I didn't say much, couldn't find the right words. What was I supposed to say? Hey, honey, just found out two of our kids aren't mine, and you've been messing around with my brother. How was your day? What's for dinner? Yeah, that didn't sound quite right, did it? Anyway, it turned out my injuries weren't too serious, and they sent me home the next day. I couldn't do much for myself, so I relied on Hilly to take care of me. It gave me time to think, time to plan. But honestly, it felt like a waste of time because I still didn't know what to do. The main concern now was Mike and the other two kids. Whatever decision I made had to be in their best interest, even if it meant sacrificing my own. Hilly's needs came last from then on. All I knew was our 20th anniversary was coming up, and the room was booked for our big dinner. I had to figure things out by then. Within about a week, I was more or less back to normal, at least physically. Everything seemed to fall back into place while I contemplated my next move. But Mike was different. He seemed like he was on the edge, just the right age to act out. You should talk to him, Davy, Hilly said one evening. I don't know what's bothering him. He doesn't seem to want to talk to me anymore. I'll have a chat with him, I promised. Any idea what's going on with him? She asked me. I've got a few ideas, I said shortly. Want to talk about them, Davy? She asked. Not really, I replied, catching her off guard. The chance came the next day when I found him alone in his room and he couldn't avoid me. Want to talk about what's bothering you, son? I began gently. He just shook his head, not wanting to open up. Is it about the other day, Mike? About our relationship? I pressed, noticing a maturity in him that surprised me. You don't understand, Dad, he challenged me. I might know more than you think, son, I countered, trying to keep a smile on my face. Then why don't you do something about it, Dad? He pushed back. Why do you let them get away with it? Wait, this wasn't going the way I expected. It seemed like we were talking about something else entirely. Get away with what, son? I asked, confused. You really don't know, Dad, he repeated. Apparently not, son, I admitted. It's Mom and Uncle Tim, Dad, he whispered. When you're at work, once a month or so, it's so embarrassing. Uncle Tim, darn it, I muttered under my breath. Tim wasn't Hilly's husband. He was married to another one of Hilly's sisters. Oh, that, I mumbled pathetically, unable to think of anything else to say. They've been doing it for years, Dad, my son informed me solemnly. Linda thinks I'm Tim's son, not yours. With that, he broke down in tears, and I wrapped my arms around him to comfort him. It had been a long time since I'd done that, and I was surprised by how big and strong my little boy felt. I can guarantee you, Mike, I assured him, as I continued to hold him. You are my son in every way, not Tim's. How do you know, Dad? He sobbed. How can you be sure? I'm sure, son, I told him confidently. Believe me, I'm sure. We talked for a while longer, and without revealing too much, I managed to convince him of his true parentage. It was like a weight being lifted off his shoulders. However, my brother's involvement as the father of Linda and Tom was not mentioned, revealing that my supposedly perfect family was not as content as I had thought. Both Linda and Tom were aware of their mother's affair with their uncle, but opted to ignore it, unsure of how to address the situation. It was a terrible position to put them in. As for Tim, he was the youngest of the four sisters, and undoubtedly the most attractive. 
While Hilly had her charms, Tim's wife added another layer of complexity to my already strained marriage. A few days later, I took all three kids out for lunch and did the most challenging thing I've ever had to do. I disclosed everything I had discovered. Throughout the day, I anxiously awaited their reactions, fearing the worst. Surprisingly, they handled the news relatively well. Linda shed a few tears, and Tom sat with his head in his hands, clearly distraught. Despite their initial shock, all three expressed a desire to confront their mother immediately. However, I convinced them to hold off, as I needed to sort out a few things first. All three of them pledged their love and loyalty to me, and were close to cutting ties with Hilly for good. I managed to dissuade them from that, reminding them that despite her mistakes, she had always been a caring mother to them. I spoke about her in a way that didn't quite match my true feelings, especially after hearing the kids' revelations. According to them, Hilly, my supposedly loving wife, had been involved in some kind of relationship with her brother-in-law Tim for a while. However, it probably wasn't long enough for him to be Mike's father. The once-a-month claim might have been an exaggeration too, but none of us were certain. One thing was clear though. The kids felt relieved to finally share their burden, and all three of them shed tears. Yes, even Tom joined in as we gathered together that evening. Let me correct that last statement. All four of us shed tears. I craved revenge, but I had to find a way to seek it without causing pain to my children. And yes, I chose my words carefully. I meant it when I said I needed revenge. I meant it for him, and yes, I meant it for my children. I pondered for a while but couldn't come up with a grand scheme for revenge. It seemed like a direct confrontation was my only option. Luckily, I had the upcoming event to do just that, the 10th of December. Our family had gathered, as families do. With my parents gone, Bob and I were among the older ones. That night, 39 of us sat down for the celebratory dinner, mainly Hilly's side of the family, along with some of our mutual friends. They said the meal was good, but for me, it might as well have been cardboard and dishwater. Then came the speeches. Here we go, I thought. Was it the end? Or perhaps just the beginning? I was sweating buckets and trying to calm my nerves with deep breaths. What I had to do wouldn't be easy, but it had to be done. Welcome, everyone, I began, starting with some small talk. Then I steered the conversation towards celebrating 20 years of marriage with my wife, Hilly. But there were some very interesting and personal things about our marriage that I needed to share with everyone. And that's where things were about to get interesting. Laughter filled the room, and there were a few jokes about our bed life. Hilly blushed, thinking it was all in good fun but little did they know how mistaken they were. As the laughter settled, Linda stood up abruptly, followed by Tom and then Mike, without a word to anyone. The whole table watched, bewildered and curious about what was going on. Come back here, all three of you, Hilly exclaimed, jumping up. Don't be disrespectful to your father. Only Tom glanced back at his mother with a sad shake of his head before joining his siblings outside. David, Hilly called to me, desperate for me to intervene. Do something. Tell them to come back right now. It's all right, dear, I responded firmly. They already know what I'm going to say, and since it concerns them, maybe it's best they're not here. Hilly looked shocked at my response, first surprised by my defiance, then worried as she tried to understand my motives. Sit down, Hilly, I commanded firmly, my tone leaving no room for argument. As I was saying, I continued, scanning the faces around me. I've had twenty years of what I thought was a perfect marriage, until a few weeks ago. I paused for effect, feeling the tension in the air. Some looked puzzled, others still wore smiles, expecting a joke, but many seemed concerned, surprising me. Imagine my shock, I went on when no one spoke up, to discover that Linda, my beloved daughter, is not biologically mine. Hilly couldn't hold back her sobs, her hands covering her face, breaking the silence. Would you like to tell everyone who Linda's real father is, Hilly? I asked but she remained silent, only her crying disrupting the quiet. Fine then, I pressed on. Does anyone else want to confess who's been with my wife behind my back? No one dared to speak, and I stood there, my gaze sharp and accusing, surveying the stunned faces of my family and friends. As terrible as it sounds, there was a strange satisfaction in exposing those who had deceived me. They had no idea how much I had uncovered. I couldn't resist giving my brother Bob a stern look, and he visibly squirmed under my gaze, knowing he had been caught. 
No one's going to confess? I challenged them. Do I have to reveal the truth? Then, to my surprise, Bob's wife Pam stood up abruptly. It's not what you think, Davy, she exclaimed, distressed. It wasn't an affair. We just had love a few times to help Hilly get pregnant. The whole family had been eager for a boy, especially my mother, and it seemed doubtful that I could father a child. If someone had dropped a feather at that moment, it would have knocked me over. Pam knew. She knew about her husband, my brother, fathering my daughter. Looking around the table, I saw it divided into two camps. Some were shocked, while others seemed unsurprised. Friends who were unaware and family members who mostly seemed to be in the loop. As I stood there, trying to collect myself, friends began to excuse themselves one by one, leaving around seventeen or eighteen of us, all relatives. Why don't you go play over there, suggested Julie, another of Hilly's sisters, and gradually the younger children were sent off. The teenagers were encouraged to leave too, but it seemed like they were glued to the scene, not willing to miss the drama. Well, you all seem to know what's going on, don't you? I exclaimed, looking around. You're all aware of this mess, except maybe the kids here. A couple of husbands appeared confused, but nobody denied it. Look, Davy, my brother attempted to explain. It's not what you think, I swear. He seemed poised to say more, but my expression of pure anger silenced him instantly. So you all knew that Bob slept with my wife and fathered Linda, huh? I demanded of the table. Nobody admitted it outright, but again, nobody denied it. I swear it was just three times, Davy, Pam defended herself, her voice rising. Whose ridiculous idea was this anyway? I shouted angrily, my frustration growing. Once again, nobody dared to speak, but too many eyes shifted towards Jan, my mother-in-law. I should have known, I muttered, acknowledging her role. Thanks a lot, Mom, I said to her with a heavy heart. Your desperation for a son has shattered my marriage. No, Hilly finally intervened, her voice trembling. Please, Davy, don't say that. I can't imagine life without you. Can't you find it in your heart to forgive one mistake? One mistake? I echoed incredulously. Just one mistake? Yes, honey, Hilly pleaded tearfully. It was only that one time. It seems so foolish now, but back then, Mom's plan made sense. And what about Tom? I pressed her, my tone firm. Well, he's yours, of course, Davy, she assured me. Wrong, I corrected her sternly. I've had a DNA test done, and his father is the same man as Linda's. The atmosphere in the room shifted instantly. What are you saying, David? Pam exclaimed in shock. You heard me, Pam, I confirmed, not backing down. If my dear brother there is Linda's father, then he's also Tom's father. Silence hung heavily in the air as this revelation sunk in. You scoundrel, Bob, Pam snapped at her husband, her voice trembling with anger. You promised me this wouldn't happen. And then you went off and slept with that woman again, Bob muttered, avoiding eye contact, clearly regretting his actions. And you, you traitor, Pam yelled at Hilly, her voice seething with anger. I agreed to let you have my husband just that one time, and then you continue sleeping with him. With that, she marched three steps towards her sister and slapped Hilly hard across the face. You deceitful cow, she spat, striking Hilly repeatedly until someone intervened and pulled her away. Tears streamed down Pam's face as she was restrained. Are you satisfied, Mom? I demanded, glaring at Jan, but she remained expressionless. So who else has been betraying me? I challenged the room, locking eyes with Tim, who sat across from me. You scoundrel! Julie screamed beside me, shocking me with her outburst. It's true what they said. You did sleep with her that night at the party. Confusion filled the air as Julie turned to her husband, Ted, who sheepishly admitted to the accusation. And you, my dear sister, Julie turned her fury towards Hilly. Have you slept with all your brother-in-laws, you shameless woman? Well, she certainly had her way with Tim over there, I interjected, a sense of satisfaction creeping in. Tim's feeble attempts to deny the accusations only fueled the chaos, leading to Julie delivering a swift blow to his nose. Don't bother coming home tonight, she yelled at him. In fact, don't ever come back. Pam unleashed her fury on Bob. I'm divorcing you, and I never want to lay eyes on you again. The three upset sisters linked arms and headed for the door. You're no sister of ours, they yelled back at Hilly as they stormed out. Feeling pleased now, Jan? I confronted my mother-in-law but she remained stoic, staring straight ahead as Hilly continued to cry into her arms. Finally, my father-in-law Alf spoke up. I'm sorry, Davy Alf. 
he began, his voice heavy with regret. If only I had known. He trailed off, unable to find the right words, but he was the only one who made any attempt at an apology. Then, Brother Bob approached me, his hands outstretched, a look of profound shame on his face. David, he stammered. David, what can I say? Nothing, you scoundrel, I retorted, my words lacking real force. I swung at him, catching him on the chin with little strength behind it. Yet the timing was perfect, and he stumbled backward, tripping over a chair and landing sprawled on the floor, making no effort to rise. That seemed to mark the end of the festivities, as the atmosphere soured, draining the fun out of the evening. Hilly didn't return home that night, and after grabbing a few things, she never returned. The kids were adamant about not speaking to her for a while, despite my own feelings of hatred towards her. However, I had to prioritize the well-being of the kids. Eventually, they softened and allowed her back into their lives, but things were never the same. I remained dad, while she became more like a distant figure. The family was torn apart. Two of the sisters who left that night filed for divorces, leaving only Pam to stick with Bob. However, she gave him a rough time, believing in giving him a taste of his own medicine. Pam showed up a couple of nights later when the kids were out, and her intentions quickly became clear. Whether it was revenge or a way to get back at me, I never found out, but I certainly got my payback. There was no love or tenderness. We just engaged in a physical frenzy for hours. It felt strange, like being intimate with my wife but different. Afterward, she thanked me and left. It was only months later that I discovered she had been doing the same with Bob's friends, one by one. Would their marriage survive this? I didn't have a clue, and honestly it wasn't my concern, but I could imagine it being pretty rough for my brother. About three weeks later, one of my other sisters, the attractive one, gave me a call and asked me out for dinner. I agreed, and we went out, had a meal, chatted, flirted, kissed, and ended up in bed. However, this time it felt different. After the initial excitement, we shared a deeper connection, making love, reminiscent of the early days with Hilly. I couldn't fathom why Tim had strayed from his marriage, but it definitely wasn't due to any lack of desire for intimacy. Perhaps the sweetest twist was when Yan's long-suffering husband Alf had enough of her meddling. He bought a 40-foot yacht and spent the rest of his days sailing around Europe. It was quite convenient for me and the kids. We often joined him for sailing trips, exploring places like the south of France, Mallorca, and the Canary Islands, creating cherished Linda-crossed paths with a young Spaniard while sailing, and eventually tied the knot with him. He hailed from a family that owned one of Europe's largest boat marinas, which turned out to be quite advantageous. As for the boys, they're taking their time and not rushing into marriage too soon, perhaps learning from their father's experience. They've got plenty of time ahead of them. As for me, I don't have much contact with Hilly, but the kids keep me updated. Apparently, she's taking life one day at a time and often inquires about me. I just nod in response. Oh, and as for my own love life, I'm considering giving marriage another shot, but this time, I'm looking inward. There's a mutual affection between us, but we're both a bit cautious. Time will tell. I want to be certain that I'm not getting married partly out of spite toward Hilly, although I must admit, the thought of her reaction if I did tie the knot again brings a smile to my face.